In this work, we propose a new continuum damage material point method for simulating glacial fracture under the combined effects of gravity and buoyancy, as well as the dangerous ensuing tsunami waves induced by these released icebergs. Modeling this glacial calving is not only pertinent right now due to the inevitable sea level change due to global warming, but also because these types of calving events can cause fatal tsunamis that could dramatically affect coastal regions. And excitingly, our method has the potential to contribute to Earth system models as well as hazard assessment and mitigation procedures. However, modeling this complex multi-phase process is anything but simple. To simulate this with the material point method, we must model three key characteristics of this phenomena. The first is to accurately model ice fracture mechanics, and we achieve this through a shear strain modification of the non-associated cam clay plasticity approach that we call Q-hardening. The second is to accurately model the surrounding ocean water, which we accomplish using a nearly incompressible fluid model. And finally, we need to capture the rich interactions between the ice and seawater. Fortunately, the material point method naturally affords us this solid fluid coupling. But most importantly, we need a robust set of ways to validate this model, and we do this in three parts. In the first, we compare our simulated tsunami wave speeds against laboratory experiments. In the second, we use an analytic bending model to validate our simulated iceberg lengths. And in the third, we reproduce various characteristics of a real-world calving event measured at Ekipsermia, an ocean-terminating outlet glacier of the Greenland ice sheet. For background, the material point method is a continuum and hybrid Eulerian-Lagrangian method which has the major advantage of associating Lagrangian material particles and Eulerian grid points for calculation. This makes MPM ideal for simulating large strain processes involving fractures, collisions, and solid fluid interactions, such as those between ice and water. In MPM, particles store position, velocity, and the deformation gradients. First, mass and velocity are transferred to the grid, which allows us to compute grid forces and then explicitly update grid velocities. Then, the trial elastic deformation gradient is computed, and if this trial stress state violates the yield condition, the deformation gradient will be updated using a return mapping algorithm. Then, finally, we update particle velocities and advect positions. For our ice plasticity model, we're inspired by the cohesive cam clay yield surface used in 2018 to dynamically simulate snow and avalanche mechanics. This work used an associative flow rule which is suitable for snow due to the large volume changes induced by the porous structure. Ice, however, is far less porous than snow and experiences minimal volume change. Thus, we adopt a non-associative flow rule to model glacial calving with volume preservation. Additionally, past work on non-associative cam clay plasticity noted that in case 3 return mapping, there's no pressure change to use for hardening. Previously, this was addressed through a geometric approximation, but we introduce a more physically inspired approach that we call Q-hardening. To do this, we note that there is a quadratic relationship between the pressure, P, and the volumetric deformation, J, and we design a J-like quantity, zeta, that has a similar quadratic relationship to the deviatoric stress, Q. Through this, we can use the change in Q to model the hardening and softening of the yield surface when we have no change in pressure. To simulate the ocean water, we adopt a nearly incompressible fluid model commonly used in smoothed particle hydrodynamics for its stiff prevention of volume change. This penalizes deviations from incompressibility by comparing the current and initial densities of the fluid. Now let's take a look at how we validated this ice-ocean model. The first model validation focuses on comparing our simulated tsunami wave speeds against laboratory experiments. In 2019, Heller et al. performed experiments in a large-scale water tank to capture the dynamics of different iceberg calving mechanisms. These experiments involved using a large block of similar density to ice and an array of sensors to capture tsunami wave speeds and amplitudes. The three mechanisms we focus on are gravity-dominated fall, seen at top left, buoyancy-dominated fall, seen at the bottom left, and finally capsizing, seen at the right. To compare, we simulate these calving mechanisms in 2D. And notice that here we color the velocity of the water particles with blue, indicating low velocity, and red being high velocity. The chart at the top right shows the amplitude of the first generated wave normalized by the maximum wave amplitude, and we found good agreement between our numerical simulations and the experimental data. In the inside graph at right, we show our MPM modeled maximum wave amplitude against the laboratory measurements, including error bars from the 2D to 3D transformations used to compare the data. From this we see that our method correctly reproduces both the gravity-dominated and capsizing cases while slightly overestimating the buoyancy-dominated case. 
Finally, at bottom right, we plot the first wave position versus time to model the wave speed, which we found to perfectly follow the theoretical limit prediction for shallow waves, as well as fair agreement with the experimental data. Our next validation method uses an analytic bending model to validate the lengths of our simulated icebergs. Here a glacier with simple geometry enters a body of water as icebergs dynamically cap into the tank. Notice that we again color the water based on velocity, but we additionally color the hardening variable of the ice to illustrate the underlying plastic softening seen in dark gray. The fractured iceberg lengths analytically correspond to the height of the ice sheet and the submergence depth of the ice. More specifically, we label the glacial height HI, the submergence depth D, and the iceberg length LI, and we run this simulation for a variety of D to H ratios. To validate the iceberg length, we developed the above right bending expression from beam theory that models the balance between the ice's weight and the water's buoyancy. In the chart at right, we show the iceberg length to height ratio as a function of the submergence depth to height ratio. We find that our simulated iceberg lengths are in line with this theoretical bending model. And note that as we increase the d to h ratio, at first, iceberg lengths increase as buoyancy supports the ice more and more. But as we reach d to h around 0.92, the ice no longer fractures, indicating the perfect balance between gravity and buoyancy. Then, accordingly, after this point, the glacier begins to fracture from the bottom due to buoyancy rather than gravity. For our final validation method, we reproduce various characteristics of a real-world calving event measured at Ekipsermia, an ocean-terminating glacier in Greenland. On the morning of July 2, 2014, a tour boat near Ekipsermia watched as over 800,000 metric tons of ice collapsed into the water just 800 meters away. Thankfully, no one was harmed, and simultaneously, a team of researchers on the opposite shore were recording measurements for this event using a terrestrial radar interferometer and tide gauge. We use our model to reproduce this calving event and compare key results against the real-world measurements. Excitingly, we found that our model accurately reproduces the iceberg size, failure plane angle, wave amplitudes at various distances, and even the average wave speed. Finally, we simulate a couple of large-scale 3D glacial calving events to fully illustrate the visual impact and intensity of the ensuing tsunami waves. First, we use 36 million particles to simulate this 2-kilometer wide glacier to focus on the ice fracture characteristics. Then we use 20 million particles to simulate this 400 meter wide glacier with a 1.6 kilometer long water tank to illustrate the tsunami propagation in 3D. And finally, we show the same simulation again, rendered as if we were viewing this calving event from a nearby boat, giving both a sense of the wave motions as well as a view of the underwater icebergs. Thanks so much for watching, and you can find more details in the paper at the link in the description.